everyone. Welcome to my channel about writing stuff. My name is Camille and today we're talking all about description. Now when it comes to description, one problem that I see a lot is the author is very telling. The thing about description and the thing about novel writing in general is that it is a running narrative. Whether you're telling your story in first person, third person limited, or omniscient, there is a character through whose eyes we are seeing the story. It's a little different if it's like third person omniscient, but I doubt a great percentage of people are writing in that. So generally speaking, there is a character voice in your narrative. There is a character's eyes through which we're seeing the story. And how that character sees the world is going to color and change their descriptions. So when it comes to descriptions, my first thing I want to talk about is show versus tell. There's a lot of, about this concept online, so I'm not going to go into the basis of it, but it's basically this idea of, you know, you want to show the reader what's happening instead of just telling them um, and know when to show versus tell. So I'm going to give you guys a quick example. If you were to say, um, let's say you're writing a first person story and you say, my bedroom was cluttered. There are several problems with this sentence of description. The first one is that your voice as the author is coming through over the voice of the character. You are blatantly telling, saying, my room was cluttered. The was in there is a to be verb and it puts a barrier between the reader and the story. It causes a barrier between that immersion and really getting into the character's head. And saying just one simple sentence of my bedroom was cluttered evokes no image. It evokes no sensory information or detail about the room. So let's pull back and say that, you know, instead of using that sentence, say, I stepped into my cluttered bedroom. Just changing a couple words and moving some things around really evokes a few things the first sentence did not. Saying I stepped brings motion into the sentence. So without giving any detail, the reader could have pictured, you know, the character opening the door to their bedroom. Um, and then saying I stepped into my cluttered bedroom, opened the door, stepped over the threshold. And the thing about our reader brains when we're reading, it is a combination between um, the author implying information and then you as the reader bringing in your memories to fill in the rest of the detail. So, you know, if I say a bedroom, you might be thinking about or you might be envisioning the bedroom you grew up in when you were a kid, or maybe a friend's room, or maybe the bedroom you're sleeping in now. Um, a lot of these things, your imagination as a reader really does inform what you're reading on the page and it adds to it. So as the author, all you need to do, and I'm saying all you need to do, like it's not hard, it is hard, but what you need to do is just trigger these memories. So including motion, saying I stepped into my cluttered bedroom instead of just saying my bedroom was cluttered, that is automatically going to give the reader this trigger of perhaps stepping into their own bedroom. Um, and you know, this is not just a tip for novel writing either. You can also use this sort of thing for short stories. I'm not going to go uh, in depth into this, but for short stories, one of the big things that you would want to cut is description. but if you just need one line of description, this is a good way to do it, is to, you know, add motion or something happening um, to really kind of nail down these images. But anyways, so then that brings us to the small details. The small details of something evoke a better image than the general outline of a thing, you know? Let's, you know, walk into the bedroom and you could describe the bed and the desk and the closet, or you could go in and say, um, you know, I stepped into my bedroom, the canopy over my bed swayed in the breeze from the open window, the breeze that must have knocked all my comic books into a puddle on the floor. 
Now, I didn't talk about, you know, the carpet on the floor. I didn't talk about what color the comforter was. I didn't talk about the closet or if there were shutters on the window, but just touching on those few specifics, describing the windswept canopy over the bed, describing the comic books littered out on the floor. By giving you these small specific details that really colors in the rest of the room. And it also informs the reader about character. This character has a canopy over their bed and they have comic books. So we know, we learned that the character likes comic books. They have a canopy over their bed. It's probably a girl, blah, 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 blah. So, um, you know, that's a big thing to keep in mind is that we are seeing the story through your character's eyes. So if you can include not only, um, you know, things about the character, but how the character interacts with things in your descriptions is um, also very important. Let's say that you have a character, um, let's say you have a character who had drowned once and they're going to this frozen lake. You could describe the lake in such a way that says your character is timid. You know, it's, I trembled at the edge of the frozen lake. Um, and you could say how the character um, was staring at how, staring at the thinning ice that spiderwebbed like the jagged mountains in the distance or something like this. You know, it's, I'm an artist. When I walk into a room, one of the first things that I notice is art on the walls. Someone else walking into the same room as me, who isn't an artist, would probably notice something else first. And you don't need to describe everything in the room. Describing one or two small details really pins it down. You know, it's, I walked into the living room and there were cigarette, or I saw the cigarette burns in the couch and the bullet holes in the wall. That paints a pretty good picture of what the rest of the room looks like. It really comes down to using the right word in the right places and describing the detail of one or two things that can really color everything else. If you attempt to describe every single detail in a room, it's going to become boring, redundant, and the reader is probably still not going to envision what you meant because their memories and things that they're drawing on while they're reading are different from yours. So keep that in mind. Um, you know, a big thing too is evoking the senses. So far, all the description that I gave was visual, but if your character is at a barbecue, you want to describe the smell of smoke because it's going to be smoky, roasted meat, um, if your character is eating something that's describing the taste, you don't need to include all five senses in every description, but if it is relevant, you do want to describe it. If your character is holding something or whatever, you can describe the grain of the wood, yada yada. It's like always, it's getting inside the head of your character and knowing how they would describe something. And if you are a discovery writer, if you're not an outline writer like I am, if you are the type of writer who gets to know your characters as you go along, you can find out who your characters are by their descriptions. If your character walks into a room and the first thing that they notice in the room is the gun hanging on the wall, then maybe that character knows how to hunt. Maybe his, his father took him hunting or her father took her hunting. Um, or maybe this person was in the military for a short time or something like this. Um, description is a great way to evoke character or as the author to get to know your character. And the last type of description that I want to talk about in this video is a little bit more literary. It is this idea of evoking um, atmosphere or a feeling. Um, and this is, you know, describing something non-corporeal. It's describing something ephemeral. So let's say, um, uh, or let me touch on this. So it's, you know, you can walk into a bedroom and describe 
the furniture and the things sitting around, but what if you want to describe how quiet a place is, or if you want to describe the darkness, or you want to describe a color. It's really hard to pin these things down because these things aren't real, you know, it's it's difficult. So basically in these descriptions, it's tacking on solid words to really pull down and cement this ephemeral or non-corporeal idea. So I'm rambling. Uh, an example of this would be, um, you know, you want to describe something like a darkness. You want to describe how dark it is. Perhaps you're writing a horror story or some tense scene and, um, you know, your character goes down to the cellar and says, you know, I stepped, I stepped into the murky darkness that unfolded and breathed back at me. That's kind of creepy. That's kind of eerie. And darkness can be murky, but darkness cannot unfold and it doesn't breathe. Darkness is not a thing. Darkness is the absence of light. So it's this idea of you are giving these solid adjectives to a thing that is itself not solid. And that provides, in this instance, a very creepy atmosphere. Or you could go into, um, you know, it's sunlight shone in through the glass, the stained glass windows and dance toward me in a plethora of colors or whatever. Light can't dance. It's light, <laughs> but you know, dancing light is a common descriptor. It is, it is a way to make this ephemeral thing solid. Um, you know, I moved through the whispering forest. The forest doesn't whisper unless you're in Lord of the Rings, the trees talk to each other, but forests don't whisper. And that gives a far different atmosphere to this description than saying, um, you know, I, I moved through the singing forest or I moved through the creaking forest. It's all about choosing the right word and, or this type of description is all about choosing the right adjectives to really cement these um, up in the air kind of ideas. So yeah, um, description's hard. <laughs> and there are a lot of types of descriptions. It's describing rooms or magic or any, any setting in general, character looks, things like this. But these are just my general beginning rules. I'll probably dig into this a little bit more later. Um, I don't have a resource this week because um, I just changed my medication and I've taken a few <laughs> um, weeks. Well, I didn't change my medication. I, my doctor upped my medication. So I've taken a couple weeks off and just kind of trying to get back into my head and I've been really lazy. So that's all I have for you this week with no resource because I suck. But you could always read something. That is, that is always a good resource. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys next week with more stuff, but for now, as always, you should be writing stuff.